beautiful. It's really hard for me to hear back here about balance, but my, from what, I, and it just maybe it's better out here. But what I what I think always is, with the with this instrument, we have to be really careful to know when we have to enter his sound, and when we, when it's us, yeah. And it seems to me that we didn't quite achieve that as well as, as we might. I mean, one of the things about the development of the, the flute over the years is that everyone, you know, everyone talks about development of these instruments as being because everybody wanted things to be louder. Um, and to a certain extent that was true, but the main thing was that, that actually the instruments are very uneven. And the, the idea, the, the, the technical things that happened to instruments uh, as the years progressed was actually because people wanted the sound to be more even, and all the little quirks of certain notes on, on particularly on the woodwind instruments, were ironed out by adding extra keys and, and, and meaning that things weren't done by uh, different uh, holes and positions, it was actually done by keys, so you got a very even sound. And yet when Mozart was writing this, he was writing it for an instrument which was intrinsically uneven. Some parts of it speak better than others. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so, as string players, we also have to be aware of that, about where, in a way, when, we, when this piece is done with a modern flute, it's just not a problem, because the modern flute has the capacity to be every much the equal volume-wise, at least, and even as wise as, as a string player. But here, I think we just need to really just be sensitive flute players, all of us, and really recognize where the, where the, where the sound can be projected and where it can't and where we have to be a bit more careful. Should we just try a little bit of this um, at the beginning with that in mind?